In 2020, it's reported that Paramount was in the early stages of a reboot for Little House on the Prairie. While updates on the project have been scarce since then, leaving us in suspense about its fate, the mere mention of a potential reboot has lingered in our minds. The original series, premiering in 1974, served as a captivating retelling of Laura Ingalls Wilder's beloved children's novels, chronicling her family's homesteading adventures in the untamed Midwest. The stellar cast, including Michael Landon, Karen Grassle, Melissa Gilbert, and Melissa Sue Anderson, has become a household name, drawing millions of viewers during its memorable nine-season run. Now, considering Little House, wrapped up roughly four decades ago, you might assume that some of the cast members have bid us farewell, yet you may find a few surprises. So, let's take a stroll down memory lane and remember the stars of Little House on the Prairie who have left us but live on in the timeless episodes that continue to capture our hearts. Dabs Greer Dabs Greer's illustrious screen career spanned an impressive seven decades leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of millions of Americans. While he had a prolific body of work, his enduring legacy is often associated with his role as Reverend Alden in the beloved classic Little House on the Prairie during the 1970s and 80s. Greer's journey began after attending college in the Midwest when he relocated to Pasadena, swiftly finding employment as an extra. His breakthrough came in the 1950s with a role on the show Adventures of Superman. Over the following decades, spanning the 1950s to the 1960s, Greer made appearances on numerous television programs and in various films. While he often secured one-off roles in TV, he contributed to recurring work on the drama anthology series The Loretta Young Show and the college-set sitcom Hank. He also left a lasting impression as Mr. Jonas on the popular Western series, Gunsmoke. However, it was his portrayal of Reverend Alden on Little House on the Prairie that solidified Greer's place in the hearts of audiences. His tenure on the show lasted from 1974 to 1983, showcasing his enduring presence on the small screen. Even beyond this iconic role, Greer's familiar face continued to grace screens for two more decades, most notably as Reverend Henry Novotny on Picket Fences. Greer officially retired in 2003 after accumulating an impressive tally of more than 290 film and television productions. His final appearance was on the popular children's show Lizzie McGuire. Greer died of a kidney and heart ailment in 2007. He was 90 years old, Carl Swenson. Carl Swenson, with decades of experience in his illustrious career, took on the role of Lars Hansen, the founder and chief elder of Walnut Grove in Little House on the Prairie. Unfortunately, this part would mark his final performance, as Swenson passed away just days after filming the season five episode where his character dies of old age. Swenson's career began in the 1930s as a radio actor, lending his voice to various programs, including Orson Welles' The Mercury Theater on the Air. Transitioning to the stage, he secured notable roles, such as playing David Beeves in Arthur Miller's first Broadway production, The Man Who Had All the Luck. It wasn't until his 50s that Swenson made his film and TV debuts with Four Boys and a Gun and The Edge of Night within months of each other. Once he entered the screen world, Swenson's talents were in high demand, and he went on to participate in nearly 200 projects over the next three decades. In 1959, a fortuitous meeting with Michael Landon on an episode of Bonanza opened the door to Swenson's eventual casting in Little House on the Prairie. Tragically, this would be his final job, as Swenson passed away in 1978 after suffering a heart attack at the age of 70. His contribution to the entertainment industry, spanning radio, stage, and screen, remains a testament to his talent and versatility. Victor French One of Victor French's early forays into acting was in a 1955 episode of TV Reader's Digest titled Human Nature Through a Rear View Mirror. 
His career continued to gain momentum as he appeared in two episodes of The Virginian in 1962 and five episodes of Bonanza from 1962 to 1971. Further solidifying his presence on the small screen, French made appearances in 18 episodes of Gunsmoke from 1966 to 1975. After concluding his role as Isaiah Edwards on Little House on the Prairie in 1983, French took on the character of Mark Gordon in the hit show Highway to Heaven. Airing on NBC from 1984 to 1989, the series showcased French's versatile talent. His television journey also included roles in Carter Country and Get Smart. In Karen Grassle's book, Bright Lights, Prairie Dust, Reflections on Life, Love, and Loss from Little House's Ma, she recounts a conversation with Michael Landon about French's passing. Landon attributed French's death to alcohol, contrary to media reports stating lung cancer as the cause. French and Landon shared a deep friendship, and French expressed his admiration for Landon in various interviews. The actor considered working with Landon a privilege, emphasizing Landon's commitment to quality in his projects, even when addressing sensitive topics. This collaboration extended beyond Highway to Heaven, as the duo had previously worked together on Bonanza and Little House on the Prairie. French's portrayal of Mark Gordon on Highway to Heaven was a realization of a dream for the actor. Landon insisted on casting him, choosing substance over conventional good looks. French believed Landon's success stemmed from his dedication to quality and his ability to avoid excessive sentimentality even when addressing poignant subjects in his shows. Victor French died on June 15, 1989. He reportedly died from lung cancer. Michael Landon. In April 1991, Michael Landon, star of Little House on the Prairie, made a poignant announcement about his battle with inoperable cancer. Melissa Gilbert, who portrayed Laura Ingalls Wilder on the show, later recounted in her memoir how Landon, true to his character, invited the press to his home to share the news and express his determination to fight the illness. Landon's approach reflected his desire to handle the situation on his own terms and prevent rumors from circulating in the tabloids. During this challenging time for Landon, another television icon, Johnny Carson, was grappling with a personal tragedy, the loss of his son, Richard Wolcott Carson, in a car crash on June 21st of the same year. Landon reached out to Carson, offering his deepest sympathy, a gesture Carson acknowledged on his talk show. Carson shared with his audience, This has been a devastating week for me and my family. Michael called last Monday expressing his deepest sympathy on the death of my son Ricky. As Landon battled his health issues, viewers were surprised by his resilience and uplifted spirits when he appeared on Carson's show. Even in the face of his struggles, Landon maintained a sense of humor, joking about tabloid headlines that claimed he wanted to have a tenth child with his wife, Cindy, before his passing. In the clip, Landon quipped, I mean, I got nine kids, nine dogs, three grandkids, one in the oven, and my wife Cindy needs something to remember me by. Tragically, Michael Landon passed away on July 1, 1991, just weeks after his appearance on Johnny Carson's show. His resilience, humor, and the genuine support he extended to others during his own challenging times left a lasting impact on those who admired him. Catherine McGregor Catherine McGregor, renowned for her role as Harriet Olsen in Little House on the Prairie, left an indelible mark in 152 episodes of the beloved series, Portraying the mean-spirited and gossipy mercantile owner of Walnut Grove, McGregor's performance as Mrs. Olson became iconic. Born in 1925 in Glendale, California, McGregor began her career in New York City after graduating from Northwestern University's drama program in 1949. Initially credited under the name Scotty McGregor, a moniker she later relinquished in the mid-70s during her transition to television. After numerous guest roles on popular sitcoms like Ironside and All in the Family, she landed the role that would define her career. Mrs. Olson. 
fans of the show both loved and hated the character of Mrs. Olsen, and McGregor openly acknowledged how intentionally she crafted that dynamic. In a 1981 interview with the Santa Cruz Sentinel, she revealed her approach. I look for the humor of Mrs. Olsen. She was originally painted as just black and white mean. Anyone that mean has to be a fool. So I began mixing farce into it. I think the audience counts on seeing Mrs. Olsen fall on her fanny. Catherine McGregor passed away in 2018 at the age of 93, leaving behind a legacy of memorable performances. Melissa Gilbert, who played Laura Ingalls Wilder on Little House on the Prairie, paid tribute to her former co-star on Instagram, highlighting McGregor's ability to bring depth to a despicable character with humor and heart. Gilbert expressed a heartfelt farewell, expressing hope for a reunion in the next chapter. Kevin Hagen. Kevin Hagen, recognized for his role as Dr. Hiram Baker, the kind-hearted physician in Little House on the Prairie, was born in Chicago in 1928 to a pair of ballroom dancers. Although Hagen initially explored more traditional career paths, including serving in the United States Navy, working for the U.S. State Department in Germany, and attending law school at UCLA, he eventually succumbed to the allure of the performing arts. In the late 50s, Hagen dropped out of law school to pursue acting, describing it as something he couldn't walk away from, stating, acting, just found it, absolutely became a part of me, do it or die, as reported by the Seattle Times. Early in his on-screen career, he appeared in the Disney film The Light in the Forest, but it was his role as a murderous Confederate deserter in Shenandoah that truly launched his career. Hagen went on to feature in numerous westerns and western-themed shows, showcasing his versatility and leading to his most iconic role as Doc Baker in Little House on the Prairie. Hagen's portrayal of Doc Baker inspired the final major project of his career, a one-man cable show titled A Playful Dose of Prairie Wisdom. In this show, according to a review in the Los Angeles Times, he dispensed the folksy wit and wisdom of a 19th-century prairie doctor on such topics as outhouses. Kevin Hagen passed away in 2005 after being diagnosed with esophageal cancer at the age of 77. His contributions to the entertainment industry, spanning from westerns to the beloved Little House on the Prairie, continue to be remembered and appreciated by fans. Richard Bull Richard Bull, the Illinois native who portrayed Nels Olson, the compassionate co-owner of the Walnut Grove Mercantile in Little House on the Prairie, often shared memorable scenes with Catherine McGregor's character. Born in 1924, Bull stumbled into acting accidentally, as he initially had plans to study music. In a 1975 interview with the Wisconsin State Journal, he recounted, I never gave serious consideration about becoming an actor. As a senior in high school, I decided to study music, but a friend suggested we attend the Goodman Theater School. In two weeks, the friend dropped out, but I was hooked. His initial professional roles were on the stage at Chicago's Goodman Theater, garnering critical acclaim that paved the way for larger projects like The Satan Bug and The Thomas Crown Affair. This trajectory ultimately led Bull to his first recurring role in the series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. In the mid-70s, Bull found his most notable role as Mr. Olson in Little House on the Prairie, adding to his impressive list of over 100 film and TV credits. Following his passing in 2014 at the age of 89, his on-screen daughter, Alison Arngrim, fondly remembered him. In a statement to Variety, Arngrim shared, In real life, Bull was just as kind, intelligent, thoughtful, and reasonable as you'd expect Nels Olsen to be. I am so grateful that I was able to spend time with him and his wife, Bobby, over the last year. I am truly very touched by the overwhelming and worldwide outpouring of love for Richard Bull. Bull's legacy lives on through his impactful contributions to the world of entertainment and the enduring affection of those who worked with him. 
Hersha Parody. Hersha Parody portrayed Alice Garvey, another school teacher in Walnut Grove, on Little House on the Prairie. Introduced in season four, Parati remained a series regular until her character's demise at the end of season six. Reflecting on her affinity for acting, Parati once shared with the Cleveland Plain Dealer that she felt destined for Hollywood, stating, I was always a child living in the world of pretend. Even when I was very little, I much preferred to make believe rather than play with dolls. In the early 70s, she committed to her passion and relocated to Los Angeles to pursue a career as a serious actress. Shortly after her move, she secured a significant role as Stella in A Streetcar Named Desire, starring opposite John Voight as Stanley. This marked her entry into the industry, and she went on to make appearances in series like Bearcats and The Waltons, paving the way for her audition for Little House on the Prairie. Today reports that Catherine McGregor and Richard Bull, two of Parody's co-stars, played instrumental roles in opening the door for her on Little House. Impressed by Parody's work in a stage production, they recommended her to the series' casting directors, ultimately shaping her journey on the show. In 2023, Hersha Parody passed away at the age of 78 after being diagnosed with a brain tumor several months earlier. Her contributions to the world of entertainment and her portrayal of Alice Garvey remain a part of the show's history, remembered by fans. Merlin Olson. Merlin Olson joined the cast of Little House on the Prairie in season four, portraying Jonathan Garvey, the husband of Hersha Parody's character and a member of Walnut Grove. Contrary to his on-screen wife, Olson didn't envision acting as his destiny. Rather, his passion lay in football. Recognized by Utah State as the greatest athlete in the school's history, Olson spent 15 seasons, from 1962 to 1976, as a formidable defensive tackle for the Los Angeles Rams, part of the team's renowned fearsome foursome defensive line. After retiring from football, he initially pursued a career in sports commentary with NBC, steering clear of the realm of make-believe. However, the towering 6.5 athlete eventually decided to explore acting. Following his time on Little House, Olsen received a sort of spin-off with the series Father Murphy. As the late 80s approached, he began to gradually ease out of active acting roles, dedicating more time to serving as a spokesperson for various brands. Olson's life took a somber turn when he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, leading to his passing in 2010 at the age of 69. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell paid tribute to Olson as an extraordinary person, friend, and football player. He cared deeply about people. Merlin was a larger-than-life person, literally and figuratively, and leaves an enormously positive legacy, as reported by NBC. Olson's impact extended beyond the football field, leaving behind a lasting legacy in the hearts of those who knew him and the fans who admired his work on and off the screen. Steve Tracy. Steve Tracy, a later addition to the Little House on the Prairie cast, portrayed Percival Dalton, the husband of Nellie Olson. Born in Ohio in 1952, Tracy discovered his passion for acting while studying drama at Los Angeles City College and Comedy at the Harvey Lembeck Comedy Workshop during his college years. While his role in Little House on the Prairie wasn't his initial professional job, it became his most recognized, marking a shift from bit parts and extra work in shows like Quincy M.E., Tracy's on-screen relationship with Alison Arngrim, who played his wife on the show, was so convincing that many assumed they were in a real-life relationship. According to Arn Grimm's book, Confessions of a Prairie B. Davuayov, the two were extremely close, doing everything together, from attending events to spending time in their trailers between takes. Despite Tracy being a gay man in reality, their friendship helped keep his private life out of the spotlight. Tragically, on Thanksgiving Day in 1986, 
Steve Tracy passed away at the age of 34 due to complications from AIDS. His untimely death marked the end of a promising career, and he is remembered by fans for his impactful contribution to Little House on the Prairie, Moses Gunn. Little House on the Prairie notably had a scarcity of characters of color, but Moses Gunn broke this pattern by portraying Joe Kagan, a former boxer turned Walnut Grove resident. Born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, Gunn's childhood was challenging, yet he found solace in stories and their narration. After serving in the Army and obtaining a bachelor's degree, he founded the theater company Footlights Across Tennessee, which toured colleges in the South and Midwest. In 1968, Gunn co-founded the Negro Ensemble Company, contributing significantly to the performing arts landscape. While renowned primarily as a stage actor, Gunn received an Obie Award for Titus Andronicus and a Tony Award for The Poison Tree. His ventures into film and TV were equally notable, earning an Emmy nomination for his role in Roots and starring in acclaimed movies such as Shaft, Ragtime, and Heartbreak Ridge. Critics hailed him as one of the country's finest actors due to his impressive body of work. Gunn's role in Little House on the Prairie came later in his career, with his final appearance in 1981, just a decade before his death in 1993. At the age of 64, he passed away from complications related to asthma, leaving behind a legacy as a trailblazing actor in both stage and screen performances. So that's all for today's video. Feel free to share which character from the TV series Little House on the Prairie has evoked the most emotional moments for you. Drop your thoughts in the comments below this video. Don't hesitate to express your feelings, support the content by liking it, subscribing to our channel, and ringing the notification bell for updates on future videos. I'm enthusiastic about sharing more cherished memories with you. Thank you and I'm eager to connect with you soon.